Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of A Mummer Story. Today, I have Chuck Gracer Jr. What's going on, Chuck? How are you, John? Thanks for I'm having doing, me on. Hey, no problem, brother. This has been a uh, been a really fun uh, documentary, and we had some really good uh, guests so far. Yeah, it is, and you certainly have um, a lot of great moms out there with a lot of great stories. So I'm anxious and uh, to see what you what you have and who you have on going forward. Um, and uh, I think this is great, to, you know, what you're doing. Cool. Well, let's let's uh, let's jump into this. So, uh, how did you get introduced into uh, mummery? I guess you call it family. Um, believe it or not, it, there's a long, there's a lot of gracers. There's a long list of gracers that have, and uh, Robesons uh, who, who have been mumming over the years. Uh, it started with my two grandfathers, Selby Robeson and um, Poppy Grazer. And it went on to my dad and my uncles, cousins, my, me, my four brothers. Now uh, I have a sister-in-law who's involved uh, with the, the South Philly Vikings. I have cousins and them marching at Wench and the Common Clubs, Wench Division. We're all over the place, and it, it's just been a family affair for a long, long time. Very cool. How, how old were you when you first got started? Uh, <laughs> 1995. Uh, I was uh, eight years old. I marshaled with the Woodland String Band. That was my the, my first very first time up the street uh, with my dad. Uh, took seventh place, and uh, I've been doing it ever since. Very cool. So, uh, have you always been with uh, Woodland String Band, or have you been with other bands? I have not, unfortunately. I have spent most of my mom career with Woodland. Uh, I've also been in uh, Overbrook String Band. Um, the Avalon string band and uh, the Furco string band. Very, very cool. So um, describe to me your first parade, whether it was, well, let's do it this way, because to me, this documentary, and it, then it, it covers, it can cover marshals or whatever, but as a mummer playing, playing an instrument, uh, okay. describe to me your, your first parade. So my first parade um, in costume was 2001 with the Greater Overbrook string band. I remember getting up, uh, we just had a really bad snowstorm the week before and uh, I'm walking to the club and uh, just being super excited, you know, getting the, you know, sitting down in the chair for the first time, getting your makeup done, putting that costume on, getting your sacks out to, to warm up and, and get ready to go. We marched first up the street, so everything was kind of hectic that morning uh, in terms of makeup, getting everybody uh, made up, dressed, ready to go out to the buses. So excited, I ran out of the club for the bus slid on an ice patch, went right down on the bell of my horn, then at my horn, my suit was all dirty. Um, it, it, it wasn't a great day for me, to be honest with you. And it's a memory that I will hold, hold near and dear to my heart. Uh, one being my first year in suit up the street too. Uh, just what a what a, a bummer to start my morning. And uh, it just, it it went into the night. I just, it was a really bad day, but a day that uh, I'll remember forever, to be honest with you. So I usually ask a question, what would have been your least favorite thing? So I guess that that might fall under that category there. Yeah, that would probably be my least favorite year um, in terms in terms of just that. Uh, I actually had a rough year uh, this this year, too. So it, it cut my hand open, bleeding all over the place. I had no idea how it happened, where it happened, when it happened. I, somebody pointed it out to me. Thank God for uh, Mike Nelson, uh, also a member of Woodland, for uh, – having a, um, a first aid kit and a med medic bag to patch me up, going, walking into city hall, strap breaks on my hat, hat's not staying on my head. I got to run back to the truck, get a stapler and staple the strap back on. So it doesn't fly off in, in front of the judges. So wow. two of my, two of my worst years. <laughs> well, let, let, let's, let's start this on, on, on a bit of, little bit of a better note for you. Tell us about your most favorite performance. My, my most favorite performance, I'm going to have to go uh, with 2016. Uh, I was in Furco. It was the first time that I marched with my father um, in about 10 years. Uh, he went to, when he, he left Woodland, he went on to Quaker City, and I stayed at Woodland, and then we got, we started moment again together in Furco, which is, uh, which was actually really awesome. Met a lot of really great people, and um, so being able to parade with him that year was truly remarkable. Again, something that I'll, I'll remember forever uh, down the line. It was just being able to turn around and see him doing what he also loves 
right behind me and he, he played bass drum that year. And I remember just turning around and every, every street song, seeing a smile on his face. We got done at City Hall and it was just a great time. It was a great day. It was a great moment. And uh, that has by far has to be my my favorite year, my favorite break. Very cool, very cool. So a lot of people, and 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 we, we discussed this, your adrenaline's gotta be going. I mean, this is like, you're, you're, you're getting ready to hit the judges area. The band's on right before you guys, just finishing up. You guys get, you know, get ready, get your props all set. What kind of, I mean, could this be like, almost like uh, playing in like the, the, the biggest game of your career sports-wise? Where does the adrenaline fit in at, as a, as a mummer pulling up to that judges stand? Believe it or not, mine starts in the morning. And, and my wife will tell you, I, as soon as I get out of bed, that alarm goes off, the adrenaline's going. I don't eat. I don't drink anything. My my heart is going a mile a minute. So for me, the adrenaline starts the morning. So I'm we're driving down to the club. We're getting our makeup done. We're we're upstairs getting dressed, and then the the warm up, particularly for Woodland, we warm up inside the club. We'll play a couple of tunes. We'll play the theme for our our families, and then we get on the bus. But uh, so mine starts in the morning. But I think it starts to intensify and and get um, a little bit more real. Uh, as you're walking into that block, you see the lights, you see the cameras, you see the people, you know, it's game on, you need to get your game face on and it's, it's, it's business. It's business for that four and a half minutes. And then after that, it's party time. But I think walking up to that line is where it really starts to intensify. And I think guys are like, okay, this is it. This is what I, I waited 365 days for. And it's, it's go time. Broad street or market street. Broad Street. And I know everybody has mixed feelings about that, uh, John. And uh, for me, I started on Broad Street. I did the Market Street thing in, in, in 2001. Um, I prefer Broad Street. I know it had the crowds aren't what they used to be, but I, I don't think it's the weather. I don't think it's that nobody wants to come out. I just think the way the parade has gone, and I'll probably get it crucified for this, but the way the parade has gone with all these big props and, and big shows and big costumes, Nobody wants to come out and see that. They want to see a parade. If we weren't, were able to go back to a scaled down form of the parade and you know the, the prop stayed on a truck and they weren't pushed behind us and we can have a nice normal easy stroll, I think it would be it would be better to, you know, than it is now. I don't mind the way we do the parade now. I just would prefer to start at Oregon and go to Broad like it used to be. If for some reason to me that was New Year's Day. That was the parade. I understand the parade after the fact now the you, you're done at city hall the stress there's no more stress you're relieved you could just have a good time and i'm all about that but south philly was the identity it's where the parade started it's where i remember starting and i i, I miss it yeah. so every, every string band um they want to win they want that number one prize but then again also a lot of guys just like to perform you guys it's been in your blood for years so for you, um, where does it fit at? Is it about winning? It's not about winning. And um, I can say that because I, have, I haven't I have won before. Um, my best prize is a second. So for me, it's, it's about the hobby. It's about the camaraderie, the fun, the family, the friends that I've made. In 25 years, I, I've made a ton of friends. I've had a ton of fun bus rides. I've I love rehearsal, you know, going to rehearsals and hanging out with the guys afterwards at the bar, having a few beers, watching some old mum tapes. If I win on New Year's Day, great. If it never happens for me, it never happens for me. It's not in the cards. But for me, it's it's about enjoying the hobby and the camaraderie. So let me ask you this question. You're you're getting suited up for your very first parade, uh, you know, to go out there and, and uh, you know, what? Did you tell me what instrument you played? I, I don't know if I asked you that already. I, I play the sax. You played another saxophone guy. Everybody's a sax. Player. That's good. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. You're getting all geared up. You're making sure you got your music together. Your very first parade. Who gave you, well, let me rephrase this. What advice was given to you and who gave it to you? Uh, two guys, actually. One, my my dad, uh, Chuck Razor Sr., and um, another man another man in the wilderness at the time, Jeff Long. And uh, he told me, whatever happens today, let it go. You worked so hard for this. You made all the rehearsals. You made all the parades and concerts. You worked your butt off for 364 days for today. Prize is a prize. 
whatever happens, come back here. You keep your head up high. You enjoy yourself. And we start again tomorrow. You, you put that suit on, and I said your adrenaline's going, and you, you, you don't want to mess up. You want to go out there and do the best you can and be the best you can. And those words were definitely um, a words of wisdom and gave me a lot of confidence to go out and do and do what I did. And again, we didn't finish well. I, I placed 15th, and uh, well, we went up first. We didn't have a lot of money, didn't have a big band. But at the end of the day, I got to do something that I watched a million other guys do before me, and it was just a good time. So uh, most bands, you know, I guess after this year ends, gets to pick their new theme. How do you guys go about it? Woodland String Band. How do you guys go about? Uh, well, let's talk about this year. How did you guys go about picking your theme this year? So for this year, uh, after COVID, not doing a lot of parades, not doing a lot of concerts, not banking a lot of money. Um, Woodland, you know, decided to go out and, and do something fun and entertaining. We were going up first and. Um, reuse what we had upstairs so we knew we had costumes from our 2020 presentation which was a cuban theme and we turned around and said okay what can we do with this with these suits that is new that is exciting that you know we'll we'll start the parade off in a good note and um we said okay let's do a rio theme we've we've done it once before but we know that we can turn these suits into something rio like or or south american like and it's fun music and it'll be a nice big nice show we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a, um, a really great financial year in 2020, 2021. So we had to do what we had to do to, to make the street. And, and we did a really good job. And I'm, I'm, I was proud. I was very proud to be a member of Wilden at, at New Year's night, uh, New Year's Day and, and the whole year. Uh, I still am, you know, and, and that says a lot about the organization that we were able to make something out of nothing. Uh, as for next year, um, our board was picked in the early January, they just recently um, seated our theme committee. So now the theme committee is sitting down and having meetings once a week or twice a week um, at the club on Zoom. And we're building our theme for 2023. I can't let it out of the bag, um, <laughs> unfortunately, right now, but um, definitely some exciting stuff going on down at Willem. Let's talk judges. Now, as a viewer, I mean, I've been a big Mummers fan for a long time. I feel sometimes the judges are off. I honestly think they should pick maybe a select few people in Philadelphia, some really good mummers fans, and and uh, you know let us choose to pray. But but what do you think about the judging system? Are you are you okay with it? Do you think it needs to be changed? I'm not okay with it. I do need to think. I do think it needs to be changed. Uh, in terms of the people that are judging, I I don't think they're judging a mummers parade. They're not judging a four and a half minute mummers production. They're looking, they're DCI judges, they're, they're marching band judges. And again, I, I'm not, I don't sit on the committee that picks the judges. I don't, I don't sit on the committee with the, for the judging criteria. But as, as a mummer, and I've been a mummer for 25 years, I don't think that is accurately being judged. And, and again, if, you know, years ago, um, you judged on your music, your performance, and your costume. It didn't matter what was going on behind you. It didn't matter how many dancers you had or how many props you had or how your, your props integrated in the show. And I know we've gotten beyond that point and we made the a parade a more uh, brigade-like you know, spectacle. And I'm fine with that. I just think that we need to be judged more on a um, mummers as more on the mummers aspect. So uh, get back to, let's say, uh, how well they played their music, how well they performed and, and what their costumes look like and do it that way. I do agree. I do think that the mummers parade judges need to be mummers fans or people that at least, you know, know about the parade. And case in point, uh, we did a jester theme in 2018 and one of the judges comments was about our costumes. Um, what are you wearing? What are you supposed to be? We were a traditional mummers jester. Well, what's, you know, what is that? We had a, we had back, small collared back pieces on. They wanted to know why we were wearing feathers. So how are you judging a mummers parade if you don't even know what I'm wearing and why I'm wearing it? We, we were, we've, as the year it was like four degrees, we finished uh, third prize. We finished third, second in music playing, third in performance, and we got buried in costume. And that wasn't the first time because they didn't like what we were wearing. Yeah, it makes, it is, makes it sense. It is what it is. It makes it, yeah, it does. And it is what it is at the end of the day or the next day and the following day. It just hurts that you missed out on a prize you should have got because of 
the way they're judging or how they're judging. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's pretty much everything I have for you tonight. Um, you know, I want to take the time to thank you for uh, coming on. If there's, is there anything that you wanted to add that we didn't uh, discuss that you want to put out there? Well, how about uh, this? For all the people who, have, who aren't from Philadelphia and, and, and uh, are going to watch us, Describe New Year's Day. How do you describe to somebody the Mummers Parade? So the Mummers Parade is uh, a giant Mardi Gras in Philadelphia. Um, if you ever are in the area, you want to come down and check it out for yourself. You're not from Philly or the surrounding area. Definitely come down and check it out. Every January 1st, starting on um, Market Street, going to City Hall and then down Broad Street to Broad and Washington. Definitely a fun, a fun, exciting day. Um, you'll, you'll meet a lot of great people. You'll see a lot of great things from the wenches, the comics, all the way up to the fancy brigades. Um, a huge Mardi Gras spectacle and, a, a, in my opinion, the best parade you're going to see in the world at any given day. Thank and you. then as, as far as uh, anything going on uh, this Sunday, if you're in the area, uh, down at Woodland, we have the Two Street slur uh, Strugglers from uh, 2 to 6. Stop on by for an a, a, you know, off-season Sunday fun day. Um, and just looking forward to the year and, and 2023. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you again for your time. If you can just do me one favor for all the Mummers fans out there, the Mummers, can you do me a favor and throw me a shout out? John Levy, you're the man. I appreciate everything you're doing for the Mummers. I, I love your, uh, your recording on YouTube from uh, New Year's Day, the way you commentate after each band. Guys, subscribe to his page, watch his videos. Uh, he's awesome. And I appreciate it. John, thanks for having me as well. Ciao, you take care. And also to you and your family, have a happy, blessed and uh, safe 2022. And I can't wait to see you guys on Broad Street next year. You as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care, bud. All right, Jeff.